Hello Zebraherd and welcome back to Cattails. And today we are going to be continuing on with our adventure. It has been a little while since I've last recorded an episode and I'll try to make it all clear by the end of today's episode. But for now we're gonna go to bed and I guess that we will focus mostly on mining today. I would love to be able to make my way to level 75 or get to the bottom of the mine and see how that works. Um, I really don't have too much more I can do in the winter, but I do need to talk about a lot of stuff. And I've been holding off on recording this series basically because I didn't really know what I wanted to do about this. I know a lot of people, of course, watch the series at this point to, you know, hear about the cats and they're interested in that. Um, can't see if you want my frog. Okay, I'll take the frog. And, you know, they don't want to hear negative things, so, you know, so it's like I've been sort of in this weird divide because I want to tell you guys about what's been going on with the cats, but some negative things have unfortunately happened, which just happens when you take care of animals, sometimes bad things happen and I guess I should just outright say it. Unfortunately, about two weeks ago now, one of our cats that I've talked about before in the series, Luke, got sick and unfortunately passed away. And it's been really tough dealing with that. Um, we've definitely missed him like crazy and there's it happened so quick. And I feel like if I really wanna get into explicit detail about it, I will of course do so, but I'll do so throughout today's episode as we mine, which shouldn't take too much mental energy to do. I would hope, I haven't played in two weeks though, so maybe I'm wrong about that. But that's why I've been like sort of hesitant is because, you know, I, I, I did ask you guys for your feedback in like the comment section of one of the episodes, you know, like, should I talk about this? Should I not? I would love to hear your feedback. A lot of you said you would, that I should go ahead and talk about it, so I will. And now that you know what I'm talking about, if you don't want to hear about any kind of sad negative stuff, don't worry, you can skip on today's episode. That's why I just wanted to make it mining. Let's see if I can't catch this bunny though. But, um... Yeah, and to really talk about Luke in detail and all of the stuff that's been going on, I think I need to talk about another cat that I haven't talked about too much in this series. About two years ago, we moved to the house I'm at now, but two years prior, we were living in a house that was, I guess, coming up three years now. Wow, I'm getting old. <laughs> we lived in a house that's about 30 minutes away, and that neighborhood had a stray cat problem. And there were two Bengal mixed breed looking cats that lived in our neighborhood a brown one and a whitish gray one. Now you guys know the whitish grayish one to be Luke, but the other cat was Brownie. Now we were able to actually catch Luke first just because he was sort of, I know, I know. No, stay here, I wanted to catch this mouse. Um, you know, we were able to catch Luke first. I actually wasn't living with Michaela when they first caught Luke. I moved in a couple like weeks to a month or so after. So yeah, we'll go to number 25 and we'll just be earning up enough that hopefully we can get to 75. I don't think we really need all that much more. Um, but yeah, they call it Luke, and Luke has always been a very timid cat because of the fact that, uh, you know, he was clearly abandoned. From what, as far as we could gather and from asking neighbors and stuff, Luke and Brownie were part of the same household, and we're not sure if the neighbors moved or if they were just sort of very neglectful because Luke spent the entire winter outside. His paws were permanently damaged from hypothermia. He clearly didn't have a home to go to, and he quickly and swiftly, from what I understand and what I know, went into, uh, you know, the house, you know, our house, you know, I didn't live there at the time, but I was soon to be living there. Um, and so, of course, you know, we kept him. And, you know, Brownie was a lot more of an explorer. He would definitely like to stay outside when we finally did catch him. He was so unique, like, oh my gosh. You, Brownie was one of a kind because of the fact that he would, like, like we had all the other cats. We were able to let the cats outside a little bit more often there because it was a very safe neighborhood. It was very open. It was a very, pretty far away from any open road. So we could sort of let the cats out without, I just totally wasted that move, uh, without worry of them, you know, getting lost or anything because they knew the area very well. Um, and we didn't have as many cats as we have now back then. So we could sort of let them out a little bit more often without it being too scary. Um, but eventually, uh, he would just start walking through the yard very slowly because there'd be other, uh, like our cats in the backyard and they just sort of look at him funny as he would slowly, inch by inch, like he was in slow motion, walk through our backyard. We'd come back in an hour. He's only halfway through our backyard. The cats are just looking at him like he's a total freak. It's just, it's just funny to think back on. Eventually we caught Brownie and we brought Brownie and Luke to our new house when we moved because they clearly didn't have a home the winters were getting worse and worse in the area and we didn't want him to have to survive that on his own and potentially not have a home to go back to. But man oh man would Brownie throw a fit if he couldn't go outside. He would sit there at the door 
all day long and just meow his little butt off. How many How many mole cash do we need to get this? 500 to get to 50. Ooh, is that really even worth it? I mean, it would be because I want to get all the way to the bottom. So we're just going to keep on earning stuff up. So right now I have 488, so I need to earn up a good chunk more. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, so yeah, we ended up moving. And Luke and Brownie, well, like, you know, not only did they seemingly grow up in the same home, they were inseparable. You could just like put them in the same room. They would never ever fight. They would always get along. They would always be playing. I have so many images and pictures and videos of them snuggling and playing. And it was just like there were two peas in a the pod. They got along so well. No other cats in the house got along as well as they did. And then sometime, I think it was mid 2016, we noticed that Brownie had like a little bump on his chin that definitely wasn't there before. And we brought him to a vet, and the first vet we brought them to said it was no problem, it's nothing to worry about, it was, you know, this or that. But we just, we didn't have a good feeling about it. And then that same weekend, he sort of got like a weird infection around there. So we brought him to another vet, and we haven't been to the other vet since. But we brought him to that, like a new vet, and we got him taken care of. But they took a look at it, they tested him, and it came back positive for cancer. He had cancer in his chin. And it was not really a good situation because when, you know, they're developing cancer in the chin, there's like, there's not really much you can do to prevent that. Like if it was in the leg, or if it was in like a body part like that, you could consider amputation to stop the spread of the cancer. But when it's in somewhere like the mouth, it's just, there's not much you can do about that situation. And I think the specific name of his cancer was squamous cell carcinoma. And they gave him about six months to live, and we were devastated. We were just totally devastated through the whole thing. But just like Brownie, he was one heck of a fighter. He would not give up, because he didn't last six months. He lasted an entire year before he gave up. You know, he got diagnosed in October of 2016. Almost an entire, well, I mean, I guess, you know, he got diagnosed, but obviously he had the cancer before then. They gave him six months at most with everything going perfect to, you know, to keep living. And he, he stuck around until July 31st of this year, uh, or not this year, 2017. So we just recently lost him. And obviously, like I said, Luke and Brownie are sort of like two in the same. You couldn't have one without the other. And you could just sort of tell that Luke was a little different after Brownie passed. And, you know, Luke always had his own issues as well. I mean, he wasn't a perfect Bill when it came to health. Um, he had a lot of kidney issues. And around the time that Brownie's journey was about to end, we started experiencing that a little bit more. We noticed that Luke was getting sick very easily. And of course, we would bring him to the vet and get him taken care of, but, um. It was really like, hard to explain, I guess. <laughs> hard to explain more than, okay. It's hard to explain, but it's also hard to explain, you know? But, um, trying to put it in words. He had kidney problems, and then they'd be increased by his pancreatic problems that were sort of intertwining with that, and he just couldn't keep any food down. We had like, kidney specific food for him, and he wouldn't be able to, like he would hate it, he would not eat it. And it was just complicated, and it seemed like his health was taking a turn. But, you know, it just, a couple weeks ago, it seemed like he was just not feeling well. He just was sleeping a lot, he, I couldn't get him to eat. There was just something not right about it. So we decided to bring him to the emergency vet, and we thought that, oh, it's just, you know, his kidney acting up again, if he can get some fluids, if he can get some stuff in him, he'll be okay. Because usually what happens when he doesn't feel well and his kidney's acting up is that he throws up a lot. I mean, cats naturally throw up a lot in general, as it is, but I guess, like, he wasn't doing that. He was very, very silent. He was just constantly sleeping. You could tell he wasn't feeling well. And unfortunately, when we brought him in, we weren't really expecting that to be the last time, or like the last night with him. It just, it all happened so quick, you know? Unfortunately, a lot of, there was a lot of negative stuff going on. He was very sick, and he got very sick really quickly. And you know, part of it was that he was sick. I feel like another part was that he was sad, you know? And maybe just because of that, he didn't really have the energy to fight. And that's, you know, 
really saddening, I know. I just, I was saying, I don't want this to be a downer of an episode, but I don't know. I just, like, I've spent this whole series talking about our cats. I can't just stop now, right? Um, but, yeah. He ended up having a lot of stuff going on. I don't know if I want to talk in, like, explicit detail. He had fluid in his lungs, a lot of stuff. Um, and obviously, it's just like one of those things where it's like we could have went forward with surgery after surgery in that next weekend trying to get him, but we could already tell he was in a really bad state, and I didn't even start with any of that, and we just knew that it was too much for him. And, you know, we just, we lost him, you know? And that just stinks, just because it's just like, those last couple months must have been really tough for him, because... He just didn't have brownie, and obviously, a lot of the time, he just wanted brownie. He didn't want to go outside. He didn't like, you know, he was he was a picky eater. He didn't want this. He didn't like that. I'm talking about the wrong thing here to this mole, but uh, at the end of the day, all he wanted was brownie, and that was just it was really sad. So, it's been a tough thing to deal with, even though we have so many cats. Just one of them being gone makes the house feel so much more empty. You know, obviously he wasn't always the nicest to some of the other cats. He didn't always get along with everybody, but he always obviously tried. He was never very good with the social aspect with other cats, probably because he didn't grow up with many. You know, he grew up with Brownie and that's it. And that's why he was able to act with Brownie. So he was able to get along with Brownie, but other cats, he always felt like he was competing with, I think, because whenever, like, he'd be totally fine with other cats, but as soon as they used his litter box or what he thought was his litter box or ate some food, that's when he'd try to sneak up on them. And obviously, he's not a bad cat. I'm not trying to say he is. It's just a matter of, um, that's just what he'd do. That's how he feel. And, you know, we always tried to put him with cats he'd get along with, but that became a lot more difficult when we didn't have Brownie anymore. And it's just a really tough thing to say goodbye because, you know, you know, obviously, not only are they household pets and companions and everything, but when they're rescues, it becomes so much more difficult because, I don't know, we, I, I give everything I have to them. And, you know, everybody in our house does. And it's just really difficult. And I feel like that's just where, you know, my brain has been at. I've been having a tough time with that kind of stuff. I'm gonna beat up a bunch of bats here. I'm actually really low on health. I need to eat these, uh, very golds. There we go. But yeah, that's what's been going on. I mean, I don't really know if I'll talk about it too much more than that, but I haven't talked about Brownie, and I just, because I didn't want to bring up those negative emotions that are brought with Brownie, and how awful cancer is, you know? But now, obviously, it's all been sort of brought back up because we've lost Luke, and it's just a shame. I mean, I just wish there was more I could do, you know? But it's like, there's only so much I can do. But, you know, I just try my best. I'm, you know, we've been trying to make sure all the other cats have good diets so that they can be as healthy as possible. A lot of our cats carry a lot of luggage just because of the fact that they've been abandoned or abused or hurt in some way. You know, obviously that carries with them throughout their life. I mean, Ochi is a 10 plus year old cat. His back leg is so injured, he always, he will be permanently walking with a hobble for the rest of his life. And he's a diabetic now. And, you know, it's just like stuff like that. And obviously I, I you know, the whole reason we do what we do is to try to make their lives easier because clearly it's been hard enough for them. And it's it's easy enough to make a difference. It's easy enough to give them food. Why wouldn't I, you know? I don't know. Maybe getting a little too introspective for, you know, an episode. You know, I'm playing a video game right now. By the way, that's everything going on with Luke. It's been a really tough couple weeks because while that was happening, there was like a bit of a stomach bug going around between the cats. We were, we were able to get everything under control and everybody's okay now. But basically, like we didn't have any time to really grieve and think about Luke because instantly after that, Shawnee got sick and then a kitten got sick, one of the, the mighty six little kittens, and then like Tom got sick and it was just like back to back to back. There was actually a point in time where I was literally up for 24, 25 hours just back to back taking care of cats, bringing some of them to the vet, getting them you know liquids, all that kind of stuff. It was ridiculous, and that's just that's just something you sign up for if you have a cat shelter, if you have an animal shelter, and you want to take care of this many cats, and you want to be able to make sure that they're living happily and healthily and not sick. That's just what you sign up for, and I'm in no way complaining. It's just, you know, trying to give you guys details, because unfortunately, that's just sort of a fact of it, you know? When you're taking care of people in need, either it be animals or humans or anything in between, there is 
you know, there there's something you're signing up for there, you know? It's it's difficult, it's no way a walk in a park. All right, let me start dropping some of this stuff. I mean, at this point, my focus should probably be to get to the bottom of the mine. I mean, I just felt like I needed to get all this out for sure, you know, before I continue on with any more mining, I just needed to tell you guys all of that kind of stuff. I'm glad we made some kind of progress. We bought the teleport to the 50, so if, at this point, we probably should just build up a couple more stuff worth of um, gems and then teleport back to the 50 spot because we went from 25 to 75 in the past. So I think that if we just build up some gems so we can you know, continue with that progress, but I'll probably warp home, build up a little repertoire of stuff and then uh, try to get from 50 to 100. Cause I think we could do that. I think if we really focused in, we could do that. I don't know if we'll do that all in today's episode. So I might spend the rest of today's episode just you know, continuing to uh, mine and build up a collection of uh, What's it called? A collection of um, gems so that we can trade those in. Because right now we have plenty of space in our inventory. We're low on health, like that's the only scary thing right now. But even that's starting to get a little bit better. Because I can hit these guys three times and take them out. I need to. Uh, I need 178 experience if I want to get the next level in fighting. I don't know if I had a goal with whatever I wanted to do next. But yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of you. Get rid of you. Ah. Get rid of you. Yeah, okay. Got him. Got him. And then got him. Cool, cool, cool. So let's do what we can around here. And now that I've gotten rid of the majority of the bats, I just want to get the exit. I mean, I guess I really shouldn't be focusing too hard on the exit because Ooh. Like, it's so easy to take these guys out when it's one-on-one. -on -one. Where are you going? Okay, if you're running, I don't care. One last bat for me to deal with. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh. oh my gosh, I'm awful. I'm playing with the PS4 controller instead of the Xbox controller today because I actually got it to work. Um, and it's a little bit different, but I definitely prefer it. The PS4 controller is so much better. Hey, you dropped the coin, thank you. But yeah, I'm sort of like a little lost in what our goals were, but I think most of it right now was surviving till a season where I can actually get things at the end of the season thingamajig. You know what I'm talking about. Because um, I need the cardinal and I need the, uh, the tur not the turkey fish, <laughs> the, uh, the catfish. Um, and I feel like the best bet is to do that at the end of the season and just have the end of the season festival and just get it from there. Cause I know both of those things you can get from there. 100% positive. It's just a matter of waiting around. And obviously I don't just want to have an entire episode where I go to bed over and over again. That sounds like the most boring thing ever. Um, so I'm just trying to sort of bide my time by mining a lot. I feel like that's the best way to do it. Cause there's a lot of mining content in this game, which is both good that there's more stuff to do, but also bad cause it feels it's pretty repetitive. And like, I don't know if there's any kind of bonus to mining to the bottom of other mines as well. I just, I really don't know. For now that we got the Canyon mine level 60. It would be cool if I could actually spend my gems on the mine teleport. Like maybe that's the most productive thing I could do if I'm trying to go ahead and spend most of my time and day mining. I mean, it's not really that late in the game. Let's go ahead and eat this frog. It'd be cool if, if I'm on 100% hunger, my health would start restoring, but that's not how it works. I just need to get a bunch of marigolds soon. I mean, I have a bunch of marigolds as it is, but I need to get more. Let's go ahead and boop, hit you, boop, hit you, don't hit me. Why are there so many bats? Why are there so many of them? I don't understand. What? Oh, hold on. This is why I definitely need to hit harder and harder. Like, I don't know how much health these guys have, but they have more than 16, because I have to hit them three times with eight damage. Hopefully they have 18 health. That way I can just um, get the next upgrade, which will hopefully make me hit for nine, and that way I'd be good, you know? I'd be able to hit them twice instead of three times, and that'd make things much easier, much, much easier. It'd be fun if I could hit the badge once and just take them down, but I don't think that's gonna happen. All right, that's gold ore, I'll pick that up. I think we're just about good, I think I'm just about done what I can do with this amount of health. So I will probably um, try to find the way out of here and, and then go back up. I mean, I'll try to look around. If there's no bats around, I might as well keep fighting. Keep going, keep fighting, there you are. I mean, if it's just one bat, I should be able to handle it right if I'm not awful at every video game ever. Got it, and got it. And we'll just keep mining, see what we can get to. And, oh, here we go. The deeper I go, the higher of a chance I can find some cool stuff, so cool stuff. I sign up for that, that sounds like nice fun. Yeah, I don't remember what each gem like they cost, so I'm just trying to pick up whatever. I know that like, I think that emeralds are better than sapphires, I think emeralds are the best ore we have right now, but I don't, I don't, I don't remember exactly. Anyways, I can go ahead and eat this frog, can pick that up, and I can go down here. 
Now we're level 64. Like, look at how easy we almost got the, you know, 65 here. And pretty good progress, if you ask me. Um, I'll go ahead and drop some copper so I can pick up the emerald. Break that, break that, break that. Oh, sapphire. Okay, so you know what? Let me drop all the iron. I keep on calling it copper when it's not copper. I'll just try to fill up my inventory with worthwhile things, and we'll work from there. Okay, got it. Move it, move it, move it. Try to break that, and that, and that. Oh, hold on, hold on, whoop, okay. You know what, I think I'm in a little too crowded here. Let's go ahead and ascend the stairs and head on out, and we'll deposit all these gems. Um, Visit Molecat Shop, 270. Wow, that is really beneficial for as little time as we put into that. Um, The teleport's only 400, I could do that. I could, maybe I can't. I mean, I could try. Go down the hole, let's go back to 50. Because I think I could get another extra 100 to send the stairs. I don't know how much some of these cost. Oh, there's definitely one in here. It's sparkly, or no, this one was sparkling. So yeah, emeralds are better than sapphires, I think. That's definitely looking to be the case here. There we go, topaz, good, good, good. Got it. Oh, I'll get these rocks for now, because I have the inventory space. I have quite a lot of inventory space. I mean, I made my way through this game pretty far without getting a single inventory expansion. It's just hard, because there's so many different things you can spend your coins on, your muse. It's like, which one is the right one? I don't know. Okay, well, he's flying away. You're not, though. Oh, boy. You didn't land that. You landed that one, though. Ow. Let's go ahead and eat this tuna, or whatever it was. I think it was tuna. Or it was a mackerel, something like that. Can't exactly remember. This guy's stuck in the rock. There you go. Okay, so let's break that one and that one. And this one, there's our way down. But yeah, I wonder how much it's gonna take me to sell or get a hundred, I'm so low on health. If I take a single hit, I'm done for. So I just need to be careful. Yeah, like this is not a good room to be careful in. You know, I'll even reset, reascend the stairs. I feel like I just need to head back because I'm risking way too much here. Um, How much was that? Probably not much. 56, hold on. I guess these are like what? Like, t uh, probably like 15 each, 45, and then maybe like these are three each or something? I don't know. Uh, we'll deposit that and then we'll definitely be able to do that pretty easily. I think that we could just go home, heal up a little bit. I can spend some Muse just for Doc to heal me. That might be my best bet. Um, it's not even bedtime though. Ain't even my bedtime. I'm heading out, I'm having a good day. Hi Lyris, hi Doc, how are y'all doing? I need to give like a lavender to the mayor. I need healing. 35 Muse, treat me fully. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That was good. Hi, Lyris, how are you? Good day to you, my rose. First they crawl, then they run over the white blue ground. Speeding on, they reach their goal on distant shores that take their toll. I wrote that poem while peering across the lake to the northwest. You should visit it sometimes and sit on its shores while you think. Northwest. Yeah, there is a lake there. Have I talked to you? I mean, you gave me the frog. I'm taking your gift, Zebra. That's just what friends do, right? Yeah, I mean, we're more than friends. Also, of course, the nursery is being built right now. I think it's gonna be on the top left. Don't know how long that's gonna take, but I am really excited for that. Um, I'm really starting to run low on food, but of course, it's the winter. That's just sort of when this kind of stuff happens. I feel like I need to hold the mice for later. I need like more impactful food right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the mouse and keyboard. All the cats are gonna come in here. Did somebody say mouse? I love mice. I'm hungry, <laughs> feed me. <laughs> okay, so we should be able to do that. That should be a decent enough food. Like, I really wasn't running out of too, food too badly. I definitely want to try to get as many marigolds as I can. That should be good. And then I can get like two of those. And then we'll do two lavenders. Oh, actually, I just need one. I just need to give one to the mayor, so. Put one back, there you go. Now I can get that out of my way. And we're good, I can hold that. And Mayor, where are you? I gotta give you something. Hopefully it'll make our friendship go up. All right, here you are. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Take this. Give, no, wait. I know, I know, we could talk to you. I'm not really too interested. Give Lavender, thanks, that's very thoughtful of you. We just can't get ourselves over three for the life of us, though, which is weird. So it is getting a little late. I don't know if it'd be worth going back now or maybe I should wait it out. 
I mean, we could wait. I could try to get some hunting done for the rest of today and then focus all in on trying to get to number 100 in the next episode. I know that, you know, going in the cave and mining isn't the most interesting thing in the world to do in this game, but like really, there's not too much more I can really do at this moment, you know? And that frog has quite the vision on him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat this right now. That'll bring me to 100%. But yeah, I am very sorry for the negative vibes in today's episode, but what am I gonna do, you know? I just hope that, what? I, I guess I stood up there a little bit accidentally. I just hope that no matter what, I can make positive impact in as many lives as I can. Either they be fe feline lives or the lives of my viewers or anything. I just hope that I can continue doing that. And then I hope I did that for Luke and Brownie in some way or another, you know? You know, it's sometimes obviously, it's hard to know if they're happy or not. Sometimes it is pretty easy. You know, they're just all cuddled up in bed and you can see they're as happy as can be. But other times, you know, you just never know. Like, would they be happy with somebody else? There you go. Picked up that mouse. We'll just keep doing this for a couple more minutes. Now. I don't wanna thank you guys for, so much for your support in the series, though. A lot of you have been enthusiastic for me to make more episodes, and I appreciate your patience. And, you know, it's getting there. We're making more episodes now. I, I plan on recording another one right after this, so that sh that'll be releasing soon. Um, and I really, I really wanna complete this game. I really, at least, at the very, very least, I want to be able to get the, um, what's it called? I wanna be able to get all of the totems finished. And I feel like the best way to do that is just to wait to the end of the season. Cause I know it wasn't at the end of fall. So if there isn't anything I'm looking for at the end of winter, that means it's either at the end of spring or summer. I think that maybe the end of spring there is the cardinal and at the end of summer there's the catfish. I'm not really sure though, but that's what we'll be trying for. And at some point I might just have to have like a sleeping spree where I just constantly sleep and sleep and sleep until the season's over. If we get all the caves done, you know? I was like, what else am I gonna do? <laughs> I'm not really sure. But I, th I think that's really it. I've been looking for things to hunt. I haven't really been doing that great of a job, have I? So I think we'll head back up. I mean, we're definitely not getting any fishing done this season. It's just like all the water's frozen. And I haven't found a single catfish. Billy, don't do it! Thank you, Billy. <laughs> How you doing? Hi, the zebra. What's in with you? I'm just hunting. You almost scared away my hunt, but you didn't. So thank you. Ooh, got a crow over here. Come on now. Can I get you? Oh, I can still get you. Oh, I can still get you. Whoop! Yeah, nice, okay, so there's that. And we're not full in inventory just yet, but this kind of stuff will be helpful and effective for when we go into the mine. I won't hold all of this. Some of this is gonna be leftovers for next time, so I don't have to go and hunt every single time I try to get some mining done, you know? But you do run out of hunger pretty gosh darn quick when you're mining, so it's good to keep all that kind of stuff in mind. But yeah, oh no, no, you're gone. See you, Mr. Squirrel. All right, then, then I think we're about finished then. We could uh, head back up. I can deposit some of this stuff in my chest. And yeah, the weather here is pretty matching to what it's like outside or not. So windy and cold all the gosh darn time. That's February for you. Weather has been ridiculous. It was raining all night last night, so there's not too much water out right now. But you get the idea. Oh, I, I just did that backwards. I was trying to put stuff into the chest, not out of. Um, so really then, I will put in Maybe that, and we'll just keep it like that. I mean, I don't need this many berries, so I'll probably stow some of those away, especially since I can give a good chunk of them to Missy. Just like that. All right, there we go, now we're good. I can put this shell in here, just so I don't have to worry about it for now, or about it later. And yeah, I think that will hit the hay. Maybe it'll be a little sneak peek if we get the nursery tomorrow. I don't think we do. I think we gotta wait a couple more days, but let's find out together. Oh, there it is. So we'll worry about that in the next episode of Cattails. If you watch this part of the video, make sure you comment Nursery Zebra. So now you watch at the end of that you're a Zebra-tastic viewer. Check out more episodes like this one on your screen right now or by subscribing to join the Zebra Herd. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.